Welcome, everybody, to the BKRR Show. Be kind of rewind with Ruckus now on Premier Streaming Network. I'm your host, AW Music Man Mikey Ruckus, and my co host, who used to be my sidekick, has now been promoted to a co host. It is Keeping It Will. Keeping It Will, how are you this week? Mm, I'm doing great, buddy. How are you doing? I'm good. That's awesome. You like that promotion, don't you? I, I think you Did need I get to, you a name tag? You, you need to stop while you're ahead, okay? <laughs> you need <a> name tag. <laughs> uh, Ruckus is greater than Will, but I digress. This week mm. on the BKRR Show, we have a longtime friend of the show, very special guest joining us. She is none other than a one and only Leva Bates. Leva, how are you today? Hey, everyone. What's up? Hey, now. Good to see you. How's everything been going? Great. Uh, crazy, but that's usually how my life stays. So <laughs> well, a good I don't thing, know right? any other way. Yeah, that's is that, is that a good thing? Is it a good feeling? Yeah, uh, some some cool stuff's popping up for me. So I'm pretty happy about that. And uh, keeping way too busy. I need a couple clones or personal assistants that work for free. So if anyone knows that, anyone looking for a job, let me know. Internship. <laughs> Internship. No payer benefits. Yeah. Internship. Well, we'll, apparently, we'll I'm, a, I'm a personal assistant that works for free, Leva. So, I mean, I mean, <laughs> I, we'll, I don't know we'll if talk. I'm very happy yeah. with who I'm working for right now. Yeah, he's my oh. assistant, and he does a fine yeah. job. So, <laughs> so we say this every time. Only one of us here has an actual assistant that works for him, and it's not right. And that's me. It's not. <laughs> <laughs> so here we are, man. You excited? 1982. 1982. Leva has actually picked a movie for us to review this week. That movie is none other than Grease 2. Oh. Grease 2. About 1982. I did not realize that movie was that old. I. <laughs> when you say that old, please explain. Because as, as I said before, like, 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 I, I was almost. I thought it came out like in maybe 86, closer to 90. I. Because I remember watching this really young, but I didn't realize it was, I don't know. I thought maybe it was a little bit more newer when I saw it. I So I'm a little bit, I'm having a slight existential crisis because I didn't realize that I've been alive for this long. <laughs> well, when you said like, it like that, just, I think me and Rockers were like, I, like yeah, I was like, just, if you think you're years. having an existential crisis because you haven't, you've been alive that long <laughs> when you thought it was like in 89, yeah. You should see how we feel now. I was in second grade when this movie yeah. came out. So <laughs> You weren't in second grade, were you? I was in second grade. And I remember school starting summer of summer of 82. And I mm -hmm. was going into second grade. And I can remember one of the kids in class. I got to go back. Damn. Back. Back to school again. <laughs> I love this movie as a as a kid. So Grease 2, directed by Patricia Birch, came out June 11th. 1982 just a couple of fun facts about this movie before we get into it right did you know that andy gibb was initially to play the male lead in this movie were you aware of that no i was not yes yeah, so no. you know who else was a initially signed actually signed to be in the movie was Cher as well and she got frustrated right she so she pulled out because the script wasn't complete and then jennifer beals was actually signed as well to play sharon cooper but dropped out to do the movie flash dance so it was kind of neat she could have uh, been in this one or she i mean talk about making the right call there right and the really cool thing about greece is this was supposed to be a franchise of four films and a tv show obviously it flopped in the theater so like look we're not doing anymore and they took the unused script of the third movie and they actually made this movie the unused script for this movie is actually a movie right now We've maybe you've seen it, maybe you haven't, but it's called High School Musical. That was actually the script for the third Grease movie. Really? Yes. What? Isn't that cool? I had <clears throat> no idea. Absolutely. And then last but not least, I am a huge Kim Carnes fan. I don't know if you remember her. She was a singer from the 80s, Betty Davis Eyes. Betty right? Davis Eyes. Yes. She was actually offered the role of Stephanie Zanone and declined it. So some fun facts Dude. about Grease 2. No way. Wow. I First of all, I can't see anybody else in that role other than Michelle Pfeiffer. Yep. And if it was, who was it? What was her name again? Kim Carnes. If it was Kim Carnes, I would not have been happy as a young boy. But you might not. Well, no, Kim Carnes I was a hot not, pop star no, back then. 
She sounded like she had smokers along right. from the early 20s. Do you know who else was signed to play it? Who? Debbie Harris. Debbie Harris. Is that Blondie? Yes. Thank you, Leva. Yay! Hey, yes. <laughs> Blondie was offered the role and turned it down because she felt she was too old to play a high school person. High school, yeah. Yep. I get that. So, so interesting fact. So as we go into Greece too, we'll start with you, Leva. What are your, th- tech is back to what your thoughts were on this movie and why you chose it. I love this movie. <clears throat> it is cheesy and fun and pretty much represents everything that is me. <laughs> I loved it. You know what? It was really hard to find. I remember watching it when I was really young. I used to get it from like the video rental store, you know. And get it on VHS and watch it. But then, like, as I got older and, like, everything was DVD, it became impossible to find for years and years and years. It wasn't until I was working at Hershey Park and I ran into another singer-dancer there that was obsessed with Grease 2 and Teen Witch, which we can talk about that another day. Uh, (laughs) And we actually, he owned both. And I was like, how do you own both? I don't know if it was, like, a, like, a you had the VHS. I can't remember exactly how he had it, but he had both. So we ended up having a big movie night where we watched both, and it was just everything I remembered from it and even more. And then a few years later, like an FYE, I finally found it on DVD to buy and to own and to cherish forever. Uh, so yeah, it was. I feel like there was a good period in my life where I could not get my hands on this movie. And you couldn't <laughs> see it anyway. So I remember loving it as a kid. I and then, but it was like you had Grease, and it was like this iconic thing. But then you had Grease too, which was a little bit more goofier and sillier, and the songs were way more like at times trashier. And yeah. it was like, yeah, you know, it's so <laughs> ridiculous, like. <laughs> And I remember Maxwell Caulfield was so adorable and I wanted to be Michelle Pfeiffer, but I've always wanted to be Michelle Pfeiffer. So that kind of also makes sense. It kind of goes with who I am, you know, AKA I always wanted to be Catwoman. So, but I digress. It was just, it was, it hit on all the little fun things. If you know anything about Teen Witch, it's a really cheesy 80s movie about a girl who gets witch powers and just wants to be popular and that type of thing and it's just like it's that silly cheesy musical thing like i don't know they all fit in that little box of whatever and it just yes it's fun it's silly you forget all about your problems because it's just ridiculous and over the top at times and absurd and i love every second of it what is your favorite part in the movie Oh my God. Uh, all of it. Uh, okay. So like, I think one of the most iconic parts of the movie is cool writer. Like, yes, I remember I was in Ohio somewhere. I was visiting my boyfriend at the time. Here to go. But anyway, and, uh, we were at this bar and had like a weird karaoke bar, but it was more like a performance for like theater kids. So someone, and one guy got it there and rocked out Cool Rider. And they had like, they had the video in the background. So you know what he was doing, but he had like the ladder and he got up there and he was like doing the thing. It was so good. It's like, <laughs> it resonates with us theater kids. A hundred percent. Cool Rider is super epic. But I mean, like, let's do it for a country. I do mean, it for our- or- that was going to be my yeah, second that's my one. Favorite. That's my I favorite. Mean, like, <laughs> We're going to score tonight. There's so many perfect songs that are in this. That are Don't proud every it. time. Every time I go to a bowling alley, I always start dancing with the ball <laughs> and pretending like, you know how hard it is to actually dance with the bowling ball like that? Because those are not real bowling balls they dance yeah. with. I was going to say, that they had to be props because ain't nobody oh my God. swinging those I'm things with balls while they're doing dancing. G- Jimmy yeah. balls. You have to find like the kids' balls so you can go. And you try to do like the, you know, pirouette and then up, down, over, woo. Yeah, it's hard. <laughs> <laughs> so Ruckus, no, have you ever I'm sorry, Lou, I didn't mean to step over you. Oh no, I'm saying I will wish to do that every time I bowl, by the way. <laughs> nice. Ruckus, have you ever sang Grease in a karaoke situation? I have not. Really? Yes. That's my go to karaoke home skillet. Really? Grease one? Yeah, yeah, Grease one, but it's still See, we're yeah. not talking about Grease one. Well, so but it's still the gonna, song. We're gonna <laughs> table that for songs. another day. Have you done any of the songs? We're talking no. about the songs. So we've done any Grease songs. 
Did you watch the movie? Yes. <laughs> what were your thoughts? Well, I, dude. Let me say. Let me tell you first. I, I get so much flack for loving this movie. Ever. Really, Mrs. Ruckus <laughs> dumps on me for loving this movie. Really, I remember. <laughs> I remember I was playing this in the living room one day. She walked in. She was like, what the hell are you watching? I was like, it's Grease 2. She said, yeah. why? I was like, because it's Grease 2. <laughs> I was in second grade when this movie came out. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, first grade, second grade, you start, you start <clears throat> understanding and developing crushes for girls in your class and stuff like that. And the whole dynamic of the nerdy dude that has – has a crush on the popular girl, but he doesn't know how to approach her. So he has to do what don't look all puzzled. Like you don't know what I'm talking about. Well, I'm like, I'm going to keep going, but, you but, look, but I understand what you're saying. I don't know if he was a Max Caulfield was like, like a God, like he was, but he that dude would have slayed ass was, in any high absolutely. school across America. Right. Absolutely. But he was, he, his part was the nerdy guy, the new student <clears throat> that nobody really liked. He was just, he was kind of like, it could be anybody else in the background. He wanted to win over the heart of this popular girl who was bound by the rules of T birds and pink ladies. So he decided to, buy a junked out motorcycle made Ooh. sure it had a spare on it and uh <laughs> <laughs> made sure it had a spare on it like and, anybody uh, would and uh he began practicing how to ride this motorcycle and then he secretly became the boy of the popular girl's dream so you know what young boy who has a crush on a girl in class at at a super young age doesn't identify with wanting to be that you know what i mean so were you riding around in your big wheel like hoping that no. the cool girl would be there somewhere and she was gonna hop <laughs> on those two little back i did pieces? have a bmx bike though <clears throat> i did have a bmx bike a green machine I could, I could i could pop wheelies for days <laughs> and i was a bad motherfucker on my on my bmx <laughs> wait <laughs> all right so so fun fact uh michelle pfeiffer was you know they did the stunts when she got on the bike and he was doing the wheelies Michelle Pfeiffer was actually the girl on the bike. She did her own stunt for that. And, of course, it wasn't – yeah, it wasn't Max Caulfield riding, you know. And of course not. He absolutely – this movie, it was supposed to be his launching, right? It actually launched Michelle Pfeiffer. It helped her, but it killed his career for years until he did – I mean, he did some stuff here and there, but he came out with a movie that's, that is also – a cult classic, which is Empire Records. Empire Records, yes. sexy Rexy, right? So, which <laughs> by the way, Manning Day. I celebrate yes. Rex Manning Day every year. Whenever we have a big visitor coming, we call it Rex Manning Day because we got to do everything. Got to get ready and be perfect. I I love Rex Manning Day. So, I mean, you're and you're right about that. The movie wasn't very celebrated. It actually flopped and it killed the whole franchise. But looking back at it, I love this as a kid as well. I learned about things probably at a very young age because let's do it for a country and i remember like what are they doing for the country what, what are they doing i need to know what they're doing Reproduction. Yes. <laughs> we're singing that as kids in the living room not having any idea what the hell they're talking about my mom walks in she's like stop singing that song i was like why if we're talking about reproduction, she's like, you don't know what you're talking about. Just shut up. <laughs> shut your pile. <laughs> and Shooter McGavin was in it, right? A young Shooter McGavin. Yeah. So uh, oh, shit, Christopher McDonald. Was, yes. like, Christopher McDonald, yeah. Chris, yeah, Shooter McGavin was in it. Goose. Yeah, he was one of the boys. Yeah. The T-Birds. I, I, I was a big fan of this movie as well. It was on HBO a lot when I was a kid yes. as well. It was like looped on the HBO all and summer long. All summer long. So you get to watch that. And, and again, I grew I love Grease 1 as well. I know we're not talking about Grease 1, but they do parallel with each other, obviously. I was a huge Grease 1 fan, but I saw Grease 2 before I saw Grease 1. And it was years really? down the road. Yeah, it was years down the road that I saw Grease 1. And it became – and I, I love musicals. I don't know what it is about them, but something about choreography, singing, dancing, and singing just makes me happy as a person. So, uh, so I'm a big fan of this movie. Um, I think it was a great pick because it makes people feel good, right? And I think mm -hmm. that's what we got from you, Leva, right? It makes you feel good just oh, it's watching so it. It's so fun. It's it's one of those you you don't need to take it too seriously. That mm -hmm. then that's why it's like it's a light. They're having a bad day, and you're like, oh man, oh and. Uh, I got to do this and, and I had bad traffic and I got bills to pay, but you just pop it on and you just have like some just lighthearted fun moments just for a little bit. 
and it's silly it's fun it makes you laugh it you forget where you are you forget about reality just for a, a little bit you know and i feel like this does this more than a lot of movies do because a lot of movies and then they're awesome for that but they're like realism and you know the hardships you go through and the hardships is like she doesn't want to do what you tell her to do she wants to do her own thing she's not the girly girl like shut up you know what i mean like mm -hmm. I, I like what i like and then he is like i just like her i want to be like her you know and it's like that is the the issue there you know what i mean like it's not like you know working on and how am I going to pay rent for this month or, you know, <laughs> world peace or a political struggle or, you know, all the weird and, and terrible things that are going on in the world right now with like, you know, our lives and, and people and human beings. It's a lot silly and fun. You know. Absolutely. And really great. Thing I think there's an I'm sorry. I, I was no, going to say, I think there's an endearing quality about mm -hmm. uh, about it. You know, because, you know, it's we see it as a fantastic movie, but we can understand why people will look at it as a terrible movie. You know, well, it's I mean? so, so bad. It's good. I just want yes. to love it. It's like like Teen Witch. It's a, <laughs> not a good movie, but I love it. That rap in Teen Witch was phenomenal. I don't know if you've it's seen one of the, it. Well, it, we have well, to have a whole other episode yeah, about Teen absolutely. Witch. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, that is one of my favorite <laughs> scenes of all time, by the way. <laughs> So, so the one of the cool things I loved about this movie, they also flipped, right? So in the first one, that guy was the rebel, the badass, right? And the girl was the goody two shoes, and they kind of flipped it around. I thought that was I a loved take on it, yeah, right? Yeah, I love that part because I'm like, and, yeah, and, the girl's and, gonna always have to be good. She's gonna be a little bit like she can be a little little spunk to her, right? Yeah, and that's why I loved loved about Michelle Pfeiffer, and I can't imagine <laughs> anyone else playing that role. I'm, I'm sure. Other people could, but I mean, she's just perfect for it. You yeah. know what I mean? She was, she so was the type of person to, to instill the lifetime, the long lifetime crush. Like, I remember Michelle Pfeiffer back then. And that's how I'll always, it doesn't matter how many roles she does, even the Catwoman and everything like that. I will always remember Michelle Pfeiffer in Grease 2. Grease 2. <laughs> it was her first leading role. And she'd done, I think, like American Graffiti and a couple other little small parts and stuff like that. Because she kind of had a scene steal American Graffiti. But, but yeah, this was her first one that kind of really stood out. And it's great that her career, even in the movie Flops, her career took off, right? And she was able to, you know, Michelle Pfeiffer, even today, is still badass, right? Even in the Marvel oh movies. God. Yeah. You know? She's, she's Icon. I mean, if you, when you watch The Last <clears throat> Ant-Man, she was the one that... She had the shit on lockdown. She lived in the quantum universe for so yeah. long. She could navigate that shit. You know, she was like, <laughs> y'all follow me. I got the connections. I know what we got to do. I really don't want to have to do this, but if we're going to do this, we're going to do this right. So that's right. Up, and she did. So any final thoughts on this ruckus? And then we'll let Leva give her final thoughts on the movie. Love it. A thousand times over. It still holds up for me. And I, I see why other people wouldn't like it. But it will always hold up for me. I watched it again. I saw it again for the first time sometime last year while we were doing the BKRR show. And it was my first time seeing it in almost 30 years. So I've already seen it again three times since then. Just because. Oh, my I, God. You've seen it since I have. Yeah. So I, I it's it's. uh. <laughs> so I hold it in high. Uh, hey, <laughs> you got to run in. I love it. <laughs> oh, and then the disc even has like their picture on it. Oh, nice. They were dreamy. I thought he looked like the British bull bulldog back then. Leva, what what are your final thoughts on this movie? <laughs> um, I it's it's fun. All the side characters, like not side characters, the, like the supporting characters. They, I thought they really brought this movie to life it, it was silly it's fun everyone had their thing i love the main characters i love the supporting characters i love that we actually had what's her name the girl from the first movie come back because she, she Didi. failed at, yes Didi. Didi. So, yeah she uh she had failed so there was a little bit of connection with the first one but yeah and i was like one of them a cousin oh yeah maxwell caulfield's character he was cousins to he Sandra was Sandy's B. cousin. Yeah, correct. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I love that it was connected, but it was his own thing, and it didn't rely too heavy on being its own thing. So, I thought Adrian's med was hysterical as the new leader of the T Birds. 
Yes. Oh my gosh, he was so guy. good. Like he, again, everyone had their like little things that they did so well, and there's things they did that could not they could not get away with today. So oh, <laughs> I mean, yeah, I mean, like the whole teacher thing, which I mean, in the eighties we all laugh. It was like, oh, that's awesome, Miss Mason. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and but, now it's a felony. Yeah, yeah, but the day. <laughs> that was funny. Miss Mason was hot. God bless. So, <laughs> all right. Well, as we come out of this, this again, this film was released in June 11th of 1982. And what we have is the top 10 songs of that week. And what we're going to do is we're going to go through and you got to know the song and sing the song. It's a little sing along we do, right, Ruckus? Yep. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> Leva, I, I I segue him into something and I say, hey, just do me a favor. I don't care what it is. Just don't just give me one word answer when I bring you into something. And he does it just to piss me off because he knows. <laughs> like, like, hey, you're, you know, yep, 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 yeah, God bless. All right. So top 10. Ju- <laughs> I kind of drop it in there at least <laughs> once every episode. <laughs> June 12th, 1982. All right. Number 10. Let's see if you know the song, you can sing it. You ready? Your single voice. You got your single voice in, Leva? Sure. All right. Excellent. (laughs) Excellent. Number 10. It's Going to Take a Miracle by Denise Williams. I don't know that one. Yeah. I don't know this one. Now, now, now this one, you both know. And I'm going to say the right, right as I start saying it, you're going to be, you're going to get it. You ready? Number nine by Tommy Two Tone. Eight six seven five three zero nine. Eight six seven five three zero nine. All right, number eight, <laughs> Joan Jett and the Blackhearts, Crimson and Clover. Crimson and Clover, over and over. Ba, 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 ba. <laughs> I don't I know that one. Words, you don't know this one. It, no, I don't. It's a remake. I uh, like time in the two tones or something like that. I, I forget, but it's a remake. It, and and I love this one. All right. Uh next up. Oh, Leva. <laughs> Jet Leva's killing it already. Yeah, number Leva. number seven, Rosanna by Toto. Rosanna. Rosanna. <laughs> Rosanna. I don't know any of the words. I just know Roseanne. Never met a girl Rose. like you. Could ever hurt so bad. Da, da, da. Not 20 years since Rosanna, she ran away. Yeah. <laughs> Down. Meet you all the way. Da-na-na. Rosanna. Yeah. Meet you all the all way. The way. Oh. <laughs> all right. Love it. Love it. Number six. Featured, and I believe this was in 40 Year Old Virgin. Number six. Heat of the Moment by Asia. You want me to start you out? It's one of those, if I heard it, I'd be like, that song. It was the heat of the moment. Moment. (laughs) That's all all I remember. (laughs) All right. I actually know that song word for word, but I'm I'm waiting on you. That's you. Go. Let's go. I uh, No, because I'm waiting for my script to finish up before I start singing professionally. Number 11. Hey, look, look. Just because I have a man's voice, you know, you know what I'm saying? All right. Number five, one of the greatest love ballads ever written, Willie Nelson, Always On My Mind. Uh, you're always on my mind. <laughs> oh, she got it. <laughs> she even got the Willie Nelson in there. <laughs> <laughs> always I, on I grew my up in mind. Kentucky. I get a plus two to like country yeah. and Willie Nelson and Conway mm. Twitty. <laughs> oh, nice. Uh, fun fact, Ruckus and Leva, this was always the song I would send to a girl when I wanted to break up with her, so I didn't hurt her feelings. I don't know if it ever worked or not, but... but, but. Wait, you really liked my song? Girls. Yeah, yeah. So if you, I used was, it, you used it one time? 27. Ooh! <laughs> <laughs> you a goddamn lie! That, that one girl... <laughs> I was making mixtapes, <laughs> bastard. All right. Number four. I don't know if you guys are know this one. I know. I remember this one. I loved this song as a kid. Ray Parker Jr., The Other Woman. Oh, damn it. All right. Lee was like, I don't know 82. How does it, how does it right. go? I'm in love with the other woman. My life was fine. Yes, it was. 
till she blew my mind. <laughs> Hey, I knew like most of these. Okay, don't judge me. You you've done very well. You've done what very well. Will, do you snap on the one and three, or you snap on the two and four? I don't know what I'm snapping at, man. I'm just snapping. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> I on know, the one and two or three. Yeah, 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 yeah. And three. Yeah. And four. I, this is just visual fact. I'm going to need you in post to 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 edit that to where it's in rhythm. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Some things and, I can't save you from. <laughs> yeah, myself. Absolutely. Number three. Now, this was this is my other karaoke jam. OK. Oh, right. You ready? The Human League. Don't you want me? Don't you <laughs> want me, baby? <laughs> don't, don't you, you want, want me? me? Oh, oh. Don't you want me, baby? You know what I used to say when I was a kid? Like, at, like I was like four years old. Don't you want me, baby? Don't you want me? Don't you want me, baby? Don't you want me, baby? Yeah, Charleston Chew. I didn't go a higher octave because I was. You were working as a waitress in a cocktail bar. Mm-hmm. When I met you, <laughs> don't, don't you don't want, you want me? me? All right, number oh, two. This is from a good buddy of mine, Ricky Springfield. Don't talk to strangers. Mrs. Ruckus will be pissed if I that I don't remember this. One. This I love. Th- okay, so so Lever, are you familiar with Rick Springfield's music other than Jesse's Girl? Jesse's girl. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I don't talk to strangers. Jesse's girl. Yeah. This is like yeah, a I... Grease One, Grease Two conversation, Ruckus. So <laughs> don't talk to strangers, baby. Won't you know? You don't remember, do you? Did no. I did I snap right? Did I snap right? You did. It was very forced. Yeah, 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 yeah. Very yeah. rigid. <laughs> Absolutely. But uh, I'll give you an A for effort. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> you know, you know, I can actually sing, right? Like if I want to bust down the track, you know, I'm gonna lay it, I'm gonna lay a diss track down next week on you. Okay. I want to see it. <laughs> I <wanna> yes. See. <clears throat> All right. Wait. All right. Yep. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I'm gonna drop it down. It's coming. Wait. It's coming. <laughs> but the great thing is, this doesn't air to like December, so I have till December before I lay that track down. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Number one. Oh, but wait a minute. Wait a minute. Oh yeah. I did like the Rick Springfield song that I really liked was "Back right. to You Drop." Yeah. Yeah. Drop to you drop with the heart city, keep on working day and night. That uh until you get what you want. <laughs> did you so he was an actor in General Hospital as well? I don't know if yep. you knew that or not. Yep. And uh he's uh he was supposed to take off, but he had a little bit of a problem that uh that hurt him in his career. He was a good, good dude. It was good to see him that he's uh calmed down. Number one, this song was a big hit. People still sing it. They may not know it. Paul McCartney with Stevie Wonder, Ebony and Ivory. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Ebony <laughs> and Ivory. <laughs> Live together Never in perfect, perfect harmony. harmony. Side by side on my piano. See? Something. That's, that's, that's my track. Why I'm going to do my diss track. We? In the form of ebony and ivory, <laughs> right? Because one of us is Puerto Rican and one of us thinks they're Puerto Rican. I'm Puerto Rican and he's 0.003% Puerto I, Rican. I tell you what, if you can tell me that in Spanish, then I will stop this argument. That is Spanish ain't got nothing to do with it. You, and I meant to send you, not. I meant to send you the article <laughs> uh, yep. of language shaming in language. 2023. <laughs> There's a language shaming article for the Spanish, the Spanish born folks. That gets shamed on for not speaking Spanish, which you're is, a part well, of that group. Well, I am. I am. Well, it's but I'm also <laughs> Puerto Rican, so I can say that you can't. So you're not Puerto Rican. I'm absolutely Puerto Rican. You're, don't you're, you're now. Now you're here. Jambalaya Rican. You're heretic shaming me. OK, <laughs> so I'm heretic shaming you're heretic you. shaming me. And I don't I don't. Oh, I don't heretic. Wait, wait, you're a heretic. Are you anti Her- like, I like heretic heritage? Yeah. So you you can't take my culture from Anti-church. me, okay? Hereditary. And <laughs> it's <a> hereditary. <laughs> it's hereditary. Oh God! All right. So as we look at 1982, we start. Good wrapping job, Leva. This yes, great job. We're gonna go over a couple of things that happened very cool in 1982. Let Leva see if you know any of these. Are you ready? 
The uh, first sure. one is you with you having a streamer and being a gamer, right? And January 7th, 1982, the popular personal computer, the Commodore 64, goes on sale. It's still adored by geeks and techies everywhere to this day. Are you familiar with that system? I heard of it. <laughs> Good talk. Good talk. I know of it. I've never put my hands on it. The uh, did you have a Commodore sixty four Russell uh, Ruckus? Russell, oh, Russell. Russell. Yeah, I'll take Russell. that. <laughs> I did not have a Commodore sixty four. I did have an Atari twenty six hundred. My mm-hmm. uncle had the Intellivision, and he had a ColecoVision. Coleco, yeah, Coleco and I had an Atari. Did you have? Okay, so so in nineteen eighty two, I don't want you to tell your age or like that, but were you you were playing Atari twenty six hundred back in the day, right? Or was it this? Or was it the seventy two hundred? Because there, there was an, another Atari right after 2600, wasn't there? Hold on. Was see, hold on. I got it. Hold on. 5200. All right. Oh, she's oh she's got the Atari. All right. I, and I remember in terms of like the oh. Commodore, the direct, I think the direct rival nice. to the Commodore was a Texas instrument, right? Texas, I yes. I think it's for the, the 26, right? Yeah, that is. Yeah, that's Pitfall. I okay. had that game. I love that Pitfall. What was Pitfall your favorite was game? Leva for 2600. Oh. It's one of the the prize games there. <laughs> oh my god! Isn't that game hard to find? Isn't that like, isn't that worth money now? Yeah, there was a whole there's a whole documentary on it. Documentary. <laughs> what uh, does, I'll get that later. What does that game uh, sell for on eBay now? Do you know? Spot. No, Do what? No. Do you know what that game sells for on eBay right now? The ET game? No. I'm curious. I'm gonna have to look that up while we're while we're doing this. But but that's actually how did you get that, Leva? Uh, that one might have been the one I owned when I was a kid. Either that's the one I owned, or I ended Holy up getting crap. another Atari gifted to me from uh, a fan at Shimmer who had a bunch of games. And mom held on to it for a long time because she drove to Shimmer from Kentucky. And I couldn't fly with all of this, obviously, because it was a big thing of it. So mom held it for a long time. And finally, I was able to finally bring it back t- with me to set up. So I have a lot of the games there, but some were mine and some I think were given as part of that. So that's that's pretty mom neat. Mom got rid of the, the Atari itself, I think, mm-hmm. but I had a couple of the games. So fun fact in nineteen eighty two on June eleventh, E. T. the extraterrestrial movie is released. Same week as Grease Two is released, and he still remains a uh, lexicon to this day, pop culture lexicon. Wow, no wonder why Grease 2 didn't do well, poor thing. <laughs> E.T. E. <laughs> killed it. And E.T. killed it. Oh, July no. 23rd. E.T. killed everybody. E.T. E. We phoned home, right? I'm going to Google that right now. <laughs> we'll, we'll wait, we'll wait. Look, look he was like, oh, wait, this is, ha, <laughs> ha. got the E.T. <laughs> <laughs> so E.T.'s oh. real. See, there you go. Do you, do you well? What if ET is a badass? Like he just comes out and he starts eating people's heads up. Like 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 he wasn't playing around the whole time. Mm-hmm. That would be amazing. July twenty third uh, is the set of Twilight Zone where the helicopter crash killed three actors. Vic Morrow being oh, wow. the, the top one and two child stars. Uh, and November thirtieth, Michael Jackson releases one of the biggest albums of all time, Thriller. This is Thriller. Thriller was 82? Yes. yes. At the end of 82. That was a me- every kid yes. in the suburbs were moonwalking their asses off, okay? Yeah, so I I just got into everything a little bit later. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> well, it, you it, go. it was retro to you. Last <laughs> but not least, the G.I. Joe toy line is relaunched by Hasbro Ruckus with the 3.75-inch figures that we yep. grew to love, right? It was one of the most successful and long-running toy lines of all time. Leva, I don't know if you're aware of this or not, but we talk a lot about toys here, right, as well, right? And I see that you're a big collector as well. And one of the things we like to do, yes, is we like to talk about... You're the cat toys. Yes. Well, there's still toys. Is that your cat back there? No, that's that's, a stuffed grumpy cat. Oh, stuffed. Stuff. So one of the things we like to do is talk about toys that should have never been made. All right. And this week, we're going to throw the thing up there. And we, as you guys are watching this, right, this week, we have a Play-Doh Fun Factory set, right? 
And Leva, we sent you something to look at here. Yes. This is recent. And it came out right before Christmas. And parents bought it because, you know, it's Play-Doh, right? And parents bought this and lost their ever-loving minds, <laughs> right? <laughs> now, Leva, we here at the BKR show, we like to be a little bit more in-depth than a normal person. So what I did was I actually went onto eBay <laughs> – you didn't. And bought the Play-Doh set, right? So we're going to pop this bad boy out, and we're going to see. It's right here. We're going to see this toy. Are you ready? Are you, when was the last time you used Play-Doh, Leva? Oh, God. Uh, uh, the last right. Tuesday. <laughs> now, <laughs> now, this is the toy in question. Oh, but it's kind of small. What? Well, I mean, I mean, it could be cold here. Okay, it could be cold. So, <laughs> this is the toy. But that's not the worst part of it. All, okay, hold on. There's more. There's more. But wait, there's more. There's more. So we got all this right. So this is good. So then you're supposed to take the play doh, right? And I haven't even opened this. This is all brand new. You take the play doh. We'll go with a random color here. You take the Play-Doh out. I, when was the last time you played with Play-Doh, Ruckus? Um, it's a long time. You put the, my grandkids don't even like Play-Doh. You put the Play-Doh in. Now, again, this is a toy for kids. My cats are, like, losing their minds right now because they got Play-Doh up by their feet now. <laughs> All right? It doesn't smell like Play-Doh used to, does it? Remember that great smell Probably of Play-Doh? Probably not, in the yeah. We played it. All right. All right, you ready? So then you put this in, and then you scroll. What the <laughs> fuck? <laughs> like, <gasps> who, was, who was the head of quality control okay. when they were designing so, this thing? My thing is, have you guys baked before? Yes. Because the, the thing you use to have the icing come out is not shaped like that. So why would they make the Correct. thing for the icing for the cake to come out like that. Like, why would you add the little rib? Like, you, <laughs> it's, like it, you know what I mean? Like, why would it, you add that little thing to give it that? Sh it's, just make a little foam. It's That's even like, got little balls, like it's, right? It's rib it's, it's the mushroom pleasure. tip. The mushroom <laughs> yeah. tip. They knew exactly what they were doing. They knew what they were doing. <laughs> oh, oh. Why? <laughs> and what's wrong? What's wrong? What's wrong? What's wrong? <laughs> and you gotta pack enough of it in there, or you'll get the unless you don't, you'll get the premature evacuation. So this is this is insane that they would actually put this in a toy. So now we have to figure out what we're gonna do with this. We have to give this away or something, right? Because I don't think any of us are gonna play with play doh, right? Or maybe maybe we do. Maybe we take clay animation. Oh. Little but, beads around to give it that shape. It, it, I'm it, like looking at this picture again. What the? This is absolutely. Now I'm going to keep doing it because you know, like they have fidget spinners, ruckus. Yeah. This would be like for me, like a pressure, like like a what do you call it? A stress relief or stress. <laughs> okay, I'm. Done. Oh, that's right up your alley. Then yeah. if that's the case. <laughs> I mean, you know, if you don't want to give it away and you want to keep it for yourself, there's no judgment here. Yeah, no we, we understand how you feel. We're in the safe zone. Are we in the safe zone? All right. The safe zone. <laughs> there's no judgment here. You know, hey man, it's, it's your world, dog. Sometimes you just feel like roughing <laughs> up the suspect, okay? So. Know, when people come over, if they see that just hanging out, laying around, they might be like, you've got to put your toy up. Oh, uh, well, you know, and you never know. But yes. And then you tell them it's my world, dog. I'm just a squirrel trying to get a nut. Which I, a Play-Doh nut. It's a did. <laughs> <laughs> what color would you like your nut in is what I'll ask them, okay? <laughs> you should take that for like a white elephant. If you do a white elephant this year, like. Yeah, I don't, kids, like, I don't have any know, friends to your... celebrate Christmas with, so, or family. I, I Yeah, but it's okay. I'll be fine. I'll be fine. He's all alone. I am. It's no one else beside okay. me. Give it to Ruckus for Christmas. <laughs> I should. He's so a bitch. He goes, Give it to Leva for Christmas. <laughs> Leva, you're going to get a package one day, and it's just going to be Play-Doh. <laughs>
Hey everyone, this is Mikey Ruckus here to tell you about a brand new segment coming to the BKRR show, Beat the Ruckus, where you send in your nostalgia questions to see if I know them, which I probably don't. And if you beat the ruckus, you win a prize. You can send your questions into the email thebkrrshow at gmail.com with the subject line, Beat the Ruckus. Good luck. All right, and that brings us to our table reads this week. I'm very excited about that. Lever, are you excited? Oh my God, yes. Wacky Table Reads is back once again. For longtime followers of the BKRR show, you know the, the routine. For new viewers, Wacky Table Reads is a segment where we have our guests choose movies, and sometimes we choose them for them. And then we go back to specific scenes and we reenact them. Complete cold reads, no rehearsing whatsoever. <laughs> Leva is uh, a repeat offender on this show. <laughs> and, uh, um, we had lots of fun in the past, and we're going to do it again. So uh, Leva and I were kind of talking back and forth yesterday, and she was like, hey, if you guys pick, I'm good with that. And I was like, all right, here we go. So <laughs> these two was, scenes, oh. <laughs> yeah, these two <laughs> scenes in particular were chosen by Keeping the Will of Myself. First one will be from Clerks 2. Transformers sucks. All and right. uh, the, the second scene I chose mm -hmm. because I thought Leva would kill it as this part. Oh, and uh, we're doing the movie Beetlejuice <laughs> where Barbara and Adam meet Beetlejuice for the for the first time. <clears throat> I'm especially excited about it because I know Leva has she has the voice of a thousand <clears throat> angels, oh. monsters, superheroes, and oh Jesus! No, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if I can do this one, but we'll try. We'll see what I can do. So <laughs> I will say that we have not rehearsed any of this. Nope. Nope. Leva got the scripts this afternoon. Mm -hmm. <laughs> will like, got the scripts right before we <laughs> right before we came on. And uh, yeah, that's how we do it. So it's it's a complete cold read, and whatever happens, happens. Let's do it. All right, let me pull up the script. All right. I'm Same. excited. And you get to play Randall. That's pretty cool, Leva. Uh, yes. And uh, funny and sh funny enough, uh, I you know what's awesome? I know everyone in the scene pretty much, <laughs> 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 which is really, really cool. Jeff Anderson, who plays Randall, I met him last year, I think, for the first time. Mm -hmm. Not for the first time. I, I met him way back. But, like, as an adult, you know, watching all the movies and stuff. And then you meet him again. And you're like, wait, that's really his voice. I thought it was like more of a character voice he put on. No, because <laughs> me and my friend were sitting there and we're like hanging out with Jeff Anderson because that's what you do at conventions, right? And we look over each other and we're like, he really sounds like that. That's so cool. <laughs> <laughs> so if he ever sees this, he'll be like, you nerd. <laughs> <laughs> it's hilarious because one of the cons, we were across from each other and the entire time we had like this war with each other so we would throw shit at each other the uh, time. Uh, and mom was like who is the guy what is he throwing stuff at you because my mom was at the con and like you would we'd throw stuff and we accidentally hit like walking guests going by oh wow or if you're signing something it would like poop hit him in the head <laughs> that is so, awesome we have this like we love each other but it's one of those like you know you pick on each other. It's like a, a brother sister rivalry almost. I love it. I love it. So <laughs> I'm a huge fan of Kevin Smith. I know Rocket says I actually played Fortnite with Jay one time. Oh no shit. I was shaking. I was so sweating. I was so <laughs> nervous, right? Because I didn't want to mess up, right? Because you know, he like I I was watching him on Twitch and he's like opening up people play. So I was like, well, hell, I'll never get this chance again. So yeah, I went in and played Fortnite with Jay Muse and I, I had a ball. It was so much. How fun. was it? Did you did you did did you do okay? We did. I gave him a gun. Like he liked this one certain gun. So I went and got found the gun, gave it to him, and started dancing for him. And then I went <laughs> off and started killing people. That's awesome. It was all right. So Clerks Two narrating will be. Me. Keeping the will, narrating, playing mm -hmm. the role of Dante and Jay. So there's a couple of one-liners. Dante has one line in there. Jay has a couple lines in there. Uh, I will be playing the role of Elias. And Randall will be played by Leva Bates. All right. She's the antagonist. <laughs> Give it to him, Leva. Give it to him. <laughs> All right. Here we go. Clerks 2, Transformers sucks. Keeping the will, you ready? I'm ready. Leva Bates, are you ready? <clears throat> Let's go. And three, two, one, scene. Elias arrives at work by getting a ride from his parents. 
They all appear to be whistling in unison. He gets out of the car and gives his mother a kiss goodbye. As Elias enters, still whistling, Randall standing there, eyeballing him. Dude, how old are you? You know, I'm 19, Randall. You wouldn't work for me last week, remember? Because you said working on my birthday would help my character. Elias notices that the fun employee of the month picture is with a Randall added word balloon that reads, I eat c-. He takes the word balloon down, crumpling it up. Well, at least you spell c- right this time. <laughs> Why the f- are you getting rides from your mother? And even worse, what the f- are you kissing her goodbye for? What the f- what? What is she? Your fucking prom date? <laughs> Randall replaces the removed word balloon with a drawing of a c- exploding with a fireworks display like penis drawings. Not going to bother me today, Randall. I'm in too good of a mood. Has your mom slipped you the tongue? <laughs> no, because... I just ran a line. There's going to be like a live action Transformers movie. And? I mean, as you know, my online handle is Optimus Prime. I know that. I wish you didn't. Well, so not only is it awesome that there's going to be a live action Transformers movie, but I'm positioned or or whatever with the best possible net handle and email address for when the movie comes out. Oh, you're going to be rolling in the p***, man. (laughs) Don't be gross. Says the guy who's just playing tonsil hockey with his mom. (laughs) Mr. Dante! (laughs) Dante swings open the bathroom door where he's taking his morning dump, reading a paper. (laughs) Leave Elias alone, Randall. (laughs) That's when Dante notices the family sitting across from the open bathroom door, staring at him, aghast. The father covers his kid's eyes. Don't look at his (laughs) wee-wee. Dante quickly closes the bathroom door. Elias smiles smugly at Randall as he pulls on the drive through headphones. Randall shakes his head. Dude, the Transformers stuck. Oh, no, they didn't. There were more than meets the eye. They could beat the pants off Reindeer Danger any day. Yeah, I'll lose sleep wondering whether you're right about that or not. I thought you weren't even allowed to watch TV a lot. In your house because you're all Christian and shit. As it turns out, cars and, and trucks that turn into robots aren't really that blasphemous because um, my pastor says that machines can turn into other machines and it's not a slight against God. The Transformers were a total slight against God. As much as his God sent his only begotten son to die on the cross to redeem mankind. And all we did to pay him back was making terrible fucking cartoons like the Transformers. Nice shot. Well, because at Bible camp, we did this flow chart. And that kind of proved or whatever since that since... Okay, since God created man and man created the Transformers, then the Transformers are like a gift from God, Randall. No, sir, they're not a gift from God. They're an unholy curse from the beast who is called the Desolate One. (laughs) I don't want to hear this, Randall. The first of the fallen, the spoiler of virgins, the master of abortions. (laughs) You know, I don't like to talk about dark forces, Randall. Let me help you out of the chair. <laughs> Jay and Silent Bob pop up the drive through window, chiming in with the song. Grandma, what it's like to be on the holiday site. Late night, night I awoke from my sleep hearing unknown voices. Yeah. <laughs> laughing insane 
Elias runs off screaming, forgetting that he's still wearing the connected drive to headphones. He gets a few feet, then is suddenly yanked backwards, landing on the floor. Randall, Jay, and Silent Bob stare at him as he lays there groaning. Oh. <laughs> And sing. <laughs> All right. Before we go any further, I, I got to understand. I don't know if your motivation was to combine a Pee Wee Herman with a Matthew McConaughey, but if you if that was it, then you nailed it. Okay, you talking about me? Yes. <laughs> he win. But Pee Wee talks like this. I didn't yeah. talk like that. And now you add Matthew McConaughey in there, and that's exactly the voice you just did. And All everyone's right. watching is going to know. <laughs> yes, they're gonna, right. that's the voice. And- Going ride in my Lincoln Town car. <laughs> He's doing a pretty good, uh, pretty good Elias, actually. So I, 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 I think he's like, pretty good, Trevor. I think he nailed it. <laughs> all, all, right, right. all right, all right. And our final scene for this evening is Beetlejuice. Barbara and Adam meet Beetlejuice for the first time. Let's back up on the story. I'm sure everybody knows it very well. Adam and Barbara die in a car accident outside their home. They are ghost confined to their home. A family moves in. The family wants to change everything up in the house, Mm -hmm. namely the mother. Mm -hmm. And they want to get them out of the house. They try to scare them. They try to do ghost stuff. And then uh, they have to rely on Beetlejuice. So this is the scene where they meet Beetlejuice for the first time. The action... The actual interaction between Beetlejuice, Adam, and Barbara, and mm-hmm. then everything that kind of flows on after that. So narrating and playing the role of Barbara will be keeping it will. So mm-hmm. keeping it will, I need you to get the uh, 1967 mm-hmm. smoking secretary voice out. And consider that darn. <clears throat> consider that done. Darn. <laughs> I love that he's doing Barbara and I'm doing Beetlejuice. You yeah. could probably nail Beetlejuice voice pretty good. I think you could do a great Beetlejuice. I I'm excited. Do I, great Beetlejuice. I don't know, yes. man. I haven't been able to practice this, but okay. That's what makes it great, though. <laughs> I will be playing the role of Adam, and mm-hmm. Beetlejuice will be played by Leva Bates. Hey, y'all. <laughs> All right. Do we have any questions, comments, or concerns before we begin? <laughs> All right. No, no, I think we're good. All right. No. I, Here we go. I would say, are you ready? But of course, every time I say questions, comments, and concerns, and there are none, and I ask if they're ready, Will has to make it a thing. So now I've made it a thing by not making it a thing. <laughs> Beetlejuice. Three, two, one. Scene. Adam looks intently through the book. Barbara's eye is caught by something in the model cemetery. <laughs> she sees a small gravestone lit up by a neon sign. <clears throat> Adam, it's him. Look, Beetlejuice. Beetlejuice. Go ahead, Barbara. Say it. Beetlejuice. <laughs> Barbara and Adam are instantly transported into the model graveyard. What happened? I think we're in the model. Hey, look at that. Barbara and Adam look around at the graveyard. Adam spots a neon Beetlejuice sign. They see a Beetlejuice tombstone at the top of the hill and decide to inspect further. <clears throat> well, where is he? What do we do? There are two <laughs> shovels that fall in front of the Beetlejuice tombstone. Looks like we dig, Barbara. The two begin uh-huh. digging. <laughs> Barbara, they're coming for you. <laughs> The two begin digging in the model gravestone. Nearly six feet down, Adam hits something. It's Beetlejuice's coffin. Oh, it's about time. I say we open it. Maybe we should knock first. A rumble emanates from the coffin. Barbara and Adam climb out of the grave, and Beetlejuice rises up and is floating above them with a huge evil smile. The attempt to run away, but he (laughs) catches up. The That's <laughs> Beetlejuice grabs Barbara and plants a big kiss right on the mouth. Ah! <laughs> Boy, you really know how to pick them. <laughs> Let me ask you something about this relationship. This relationship really solid? Do you have a shot at her at all? Excuse me. Sure, sure. I, I overstepped my bounds. <laughs> Just tell me. Come on. Come on. You know, 
What's really beautiful about this? You cute. You two kids picked me. You didn't have to, but you picked me. Makes me just want to kiss you guys. Come on, give me one. Hey, no! I beg your pardon. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. <clears throat> Let's get down to business. All right, I got a card around here somewhere. Uh, here, hold this. Uh, here, who do I have to kill? Beetlejuice reaches his pocket and hands Barbara a rat. <laughs> you don't have to kill anybody. Ah, possession. Learn it through your voice. Fool your friends. Fun at parties. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> no, we just want to get some people out of our house. Uh, I understand. I understand. Well, look, okay. In order to do that, we really got to have to know each other. <laughs> we got to get real closer, move in for a while. We got to be real pals, you know? <laughs> <laughs> You know what I'm saying? I'll save that for later. <laughs> <laughs> My wife and I would like to ask you a couple of questions. Oh, oh, sure, sure. <clears throat> Go ahead, shoot. For instance, uh, what are your qualifications? <clears throat> well, I attended Juilliard. <laughs> I graduated the of the Harvard Business School. I travel quite extensively. I lived through the Black Plague and uh, had a pretty good time during that and I've seen The Exorcist about 167 times and it keeps getting funnier every single time I see it. <laughs> Not to mention the fact that you're talking to a dead guy. Now what do you think? <laughs> do you think I'm qualified? <laughs> well, what I mean is, can you be scary? Oh, thanks for asking me if I can be scary. <laughs> what do you think about this? <laughs> will, will you excuse us, please? Here, here, here. Talk amongst yourselves. As Adam and Barbara begin discussing the situation, Beetlejuice grabs a stick and attempts to lift Barbara's dress to get a peek. Hey, hey, hey! Excuse me, excuse me. We are leaving now. Oh, hey, hey, come on. Don't go yet. Hey, guys, come on. Where's the pot of co? Here, look. We have a shop at the same store. I, Hermano. <laughs> yeah, here you go. <laughs> Beetlejuice pulls Adam in for a hug and reaches behind him to tickle Barbara. <laughs> hey, come on, come on. We're like peas in the pod, the three of us, let's face it. You want someone out of the house? I want to get someone out of your house. Hey, hey, oh, look, Saturn. <laughs> I've been to Saturn. Whoa, sandworms, you hate them, am I right? <laughs> I hate him myself. Come on, kids. What do I do to get a strike a deal with you two, huh? Huh? Beetlejuice rears back and spins his head around numerous times while screaming. He grabs his head to stop it as Barbara and Adam are shocked. Ugh. Don't you hate that when that happens? Let's go, Barbara. <laughs> wait a minute. Wait a minute. <laughs> Just come on. Come on. Come on. Let's talk it over for a while. Let's talk inside. Come on. Come on. Come on. I'm not staying here another minute. <laughs> the place is a mess. Just don't pay attention to it. I'll, I'll fix this something to eat. <laughs> home. 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 <laughs> Barbara and Adam are instantly transported back to the model and in out of the model and into the attic unbeknownst to Beetlejuice. Barbara, how did you do that? Beetlejuice turns to see that they are gone. Okay. Uh, I hope you like Italian, eh? Hey. hey, where'd you go? Hey! Come on! Hey, where'd you go? Oh, come on! You gotta work with me here! <laughs> I'm just trying to cut a deal. What do you want me to do? Where are you? You bunch of losers. You're working with a professional here. Beetlejuice kicks the model tree and it falls over. After one, the last split riddle line grabs his genitals. Nice f***ing model. <laughs> and see. <laughs> oh my god, you were great! Leva, that was amazing. Amazing! That was so much fun! 
Oh my god. <laughs> oh goodness me. Now you got a nice I, model. I, 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 I closed my eyes and I thought I was listening to Beetlejuice. Oh my god, no. <laughs> I don't think I was anywhere near, I just made it my own. <laughs> No, I, first of all, leave it. Thank you so much. You're always have been, not that I don't love every guest, but you've always been one of my favorite guests. Uh, by the way, y'all check out her stream. I have so much fun. She's got a great community, right? Lots of interesting games. And then when she gets mad, when she starts losing some, the way she cusses, it's, I don't say cusses, but she, she lets you know, which is funny as hell. I love your stream. I have a good time watching it. <laughs> awesome. Yes. And just to follow up with that, leave a, you're always welcome on the show whenever you want to come on. You're an amazing human being. We always enjoy having you here. Yay. And uh, if you have any <laughs> ideas on scenes that you want to do, hit me up. We will make the time and make the scenes happen. Yeah. You know what's interesting? I have to find a scene every week now for class. So I'm in the middle of uh, trying to find something now. I kind of want to do true romance. I'm afraid I, I know it too well because we have to do scenes from movies, but like nothing we're like too familiar with. I love true romance. I haven't seen it in years, but I'm pretty <laughs> sure I can be like, I'm Miss Alabama Worley. <laughs> Good deal. Well, Leva, once again, you're always welcome here. We're only a phone call, text away. Ladies and gentlemen, Leva Bates. Mm -hmm.